就在上周啊，我又一次来到了夏威夷，参加高通一年一度的骁龙峰会。那这一次峰会对我来说含金量就很高了，因为我们获得了采访高通 CEO 克里斯亚诺安蒙的机会。那他是如何看待这一次登陆手机端的 Orion 自研 CPU 的呢？以及他会如何回答我们的尖锐问题呢？一起来看一看吧。Hey Cristiano, nice to have you here today. And look at where we are. Beautiful Maui, right? Look, exciting time to be here in Maui. It's my favorite event. It's Snapdragon Summit. Thank you for coming, and I'm super happy to have this conversation with you. And congratulations on launching the, you know. Custom CPUs, Orion cores on mobile. I do have a lot of questions about Orions and our new, you know, Snapdragon 8 Elite products here. Fire away! So it must be extremely challenging for you and your fellow engineers to make such a great custom CPU. And I kind of wondering, you know,、uh, during the development process of、uh, Orion CPU, is there anything surprise you and you, your team? Maybe share some stories about the development process. Look, it's not a challenge; it's an opportunity. I feel there's incredible amount of excitement within Qualcomm, and we're heavy engineering culture.、Uh, within Qualcomm, can we? Disrupt? Can we change? Can we build a leadership position?、And、the good thing is about the opportunity to do something different, and that's why one of the things that when I got Gerard on stage, he said, not only it's the fast performing one, it's the smallest, it's the smallest core across the entire industry. I think the commitment to innovation. Of course, every time you're doing something new, you know you have to think about it. Is the performance, you know, going to meet what we expect it to have in the simulation? How are we going to deal with thermals? How are we going to get to the clock speeds? And I think the the fascinating thing, which has been true in the second generation Orion that you see now on 8 Elite, it actually exceed the expectations. The engineering work product. Performance, it was better than what we expected to be on the simulation. That doesn't happen often, but I think that speaks to how excited our engineers were to do something new and to do something that will actually be the leading、uh, processor platform. Well, exciting new years, and I'm looking forward to the products. Let's say <clears throat> start with a tough question number one. So actually, Orion CPUs are not your first custom CPUs.、Uh, you actually designed the Corite and the Cryo CPUs for,、uh, I believe,、uh, Snapdragon S4 and the Snapdragon 820 back in 10 years ago. Unfortunately, you ditched those products and、uh, you know stick with ARM IPs back then. And now, after 10 years, again, you're starting to. You know, design your own custom CPUs again with、uh, Orion CPUs. Why do you think this time would be any different?、Yeah. Yes, actually, I love this question. It's not a tough question at all. I love it because it gave me an opportunity to tell the story, and I'll tell the story because it's it's very simple when we look about it. I'll go back in time. There was 3G, and 3G there were feature phones. And we started developing 4G technology. And usually, we develop a technology. When you think about wireless generation, we develop 10 years. You know, we started developing 10 years before the launch. And 4G was about bringing broadband to a cell phone. So when we started developing 4G, we realized we're going to bring broadband to a cell phone. The cell phone needs to become a computer because if you're going to have broadband, you're going to have a computer, and the computer needs to fit in the palm of your hand. And if it's a computer, it needs to run a high-level OS. So at that time, we look of ARM. There was licensed CPUs that we use in feature phones and some of our feature phone platforms for 3G. And we said, there's nothing available. There's not a CPU on a battery-powered phone device that can run a high-level OS and have one gigahertz of clock speed. Not available. So we couldn't realize division. Of the smartphone, so we needed to do our own CPU, and that's what we did. We developed Scorpion. If you remember,、yeah. Scorpion was the very first CPU ever that could run a high-level OS, have one gigahertz of clock speed, yeah, and a battery-powered、yeah, exactly. device. And why did we do that? It because it wasn't available. So we needed to invent the future for our ambition in Snapdragon, and that's how Snapdragon was born. That was first the Snapdragon with Scorpion CPU. Then we went from that to Crate, which is a dual-core CPU, and then eventually, ARM caught up, and they started to offer a similar CPU. So at that time, we realized it's we can license CPUs 
because now we have a CPU that can support a level OS and they have caught up on the roadmap. But Qualcomm didn't stay still. We decided we needed to go into the PC space. And to go into PC space, there was nothing, nothing available from ARM that could have a leadership position in the PC space. So what did we have to do? Do the same thing again. We're going to have to build our own CPU. And that's Orion. And by like the name Orion and Scorpion, you may not know, but if you know, it's two twin constellations. That's where the Orion name came from, because the first one was Scorpion. So we're doing what we always do. We need to invent the future. If there's not available, we just create it ourselves. And I think that's the story behind Orion. Great story. And why now? Like, uh, why do you think now is the right time to get this step forward? Because if you look, the first thing we did with Orion was Copilot Plus PCs. Mm -hmm. We saw the entry point for us in PCs as building on two vectors, mobile PC conversions and AI PC, as PC is going to change your AI. So we say, we're going to go enter, and then we build a number of platforms before that to help bring the ecosystem of applications. That's what we're doing with Microsoft in the emulation. And then it was time to launch the AI. We had Orion ready. That was X Elite. And that's exactly what I told you. There was nothing like it. And now X Elite is the new sheriff in town in uh, Windows PCs. Great sharing. And maybe let's talk about a bit about uh, collaboration with all the OEM, all the Chinese phone makers. I don't know if you heard this kind of saying before. Actually, a lot of you know Chinese phone makers quoting uh, joint optimization or joint development on their launching event of the you know Snapdragon products, which literally says or means uh, Qualcomm design and uh, develop the chip together with them. So I want to know what is your thought on that joint uh, development part. And also, you know, uh, do OEMs do have a huge impact on your chip designing? Maybe share some stories with us about yes, the collaboration yes. with OEMs. Look, I think what makes the relationship that we have, I think with our many OEM partners, including all the partners in China, so special, is that we have this view, it's not the job of one company to innovate. You know, at the end of the day, the best work comes when we do the best of we can do with Snapdragon and they do the best we can do on the incredible device they're going to build on Snapdragon. And I think one of the unique things about Snapdragon is the platform is open and allow innovation to come from all of our partners. So what you see there saying exactly what happened in our partnership with companies like Xiaomi, with Honor, with Oppo, with OnePlus, with Vivo, especially what we do in premium tier, which is pushing the boundaries of technology. There's so many new innovation happening on image processing, computer vision, camera, in connectivity, in AI, and it's really a joint development effort between our engineers and their engineers. And I'll tell you more. I think uh, if you watch the keynote, we even show like we're doing in BMW, jointly yeah, yeah. developing an ADAS platform. I think that's what makes Qualcomm Snapdragon so unique in why it makes those partnerships really long lasting partnerships. Uh, we just show on stage, we've been working with Samsung for 30 years, right? And I think we want that relationship of our many partners in China to be like that. Great to hear you got so many customers being loyalty to you guys and making great products with Snapdragon inside. So flagship chips on phones are actually getting more and more expensive every year. Uh, that's the truth, and which by now seems like a never-ending trend. Why don't we just make better products at the same price tag, maybe the same envelope? Do you think it's necessary to bring the price up uh, in order to actually deliver better products? Or maybe at some point we should make maybe rethink of the pricing strategy or the costing of the uh, flagship SOCs? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question. And I'm going to start answering the question by saying, Part of the problem is that consumers want more out of their smartphones. You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit. Okay. Uh, think about data center. Data center seems to be becoming a lot more expensive, uh, especially because of the amount of computing power that's needed to train AI models is actually becoming very expensive. In one way, 
uh, the role of what we have in smartphones is actually to democratize AI. We're going to make it cheaper because you'll be able to run that on the, the computer and you have it in the palm of your hand. But the reality is we have a mature smartphone uh, uh, user base today. It's our inseparable device. But consumers want better gaming experience. They want more processor. They want more AI. They want a better camera. Just think about the quality of the camera that we have right now in the palm of your hand. So I think what happened is a result of consumers deciding that they want that phone to become better generation of a generation. And we're just packing so much computing power into those devices. Just think about it, you have now professional quality camera, you have now AI that does the same thing that you can do, if not more, than a laptop, and you can play mainstream games on your device, and I think that's what's driving cost. Having said that, one of the things we have been trying to do is how we can continue to make the Snapdragon in the mass to your devices, uh, as capable as possible, so people have choice at different price points. That's the beauty of the mobile market, uh, which everyone has a phone, and I think that's what we're going to continue to strive to do. That's a great vision. And uh, one last question, let's talk about the uh, innovation of form factor. Uh, actually, we still see significant improvements in smartphone performance and efficiency provided by you guys, the, the Snapdragon chips, every year. Uh, but uh, overall innovation in uh, form factor of the phone seems to be slowing down in recent years. Uh, like, uh, for example, if you compare a phone from uh, 2020 and a phone from 2024, uh, they might have very different performance. They might have a very different AI capability, uh, but uh, they seem identical and the 2020 phone, say, also have this very small bezel uh, and uh, high refresh rates, screens, and all the fast chargings and starts. My question is, uh, do you think there is still a space for innovation in terms of uh, smartphones uh, phone factors? I think so. I am going to draw a parallel, right? So PC has been around for a long time. And now we, we enter the PC in a big way with actually and we're seeing incredible attention to design and detail with new form factors, uh, very thin, light, and just leveraging a kind of battery life. So I see phones, there's still an opportunity to improve it. Like personally, I have been a big fan of flip phones. I have been uh, using that now for a number of years. I think that uh, form factor with uh, foldable screens is still uh, we're the beginning of that. I think there's going to be a lot more innovation, but also how we can make use of improvements in silicon to make form factors more attractive, more portable. I will see phones having a bigger role interacting with wearable devices. We're going to see phone and smart glasses working together, and that's going to start changing the design. So don't lose hope on phones. I think there's going to be a new cycle of innovation coming. Right, that really sounds futuristic. <laughs> okay, thanks for having you here today, Cristiano, and that's all of my questions. Have a nice day here at Moi. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this event special. It's all the attendance of people like you that make this event worth having, and uh, pleasure talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you.